Council of the City of Norfolk is now in session. This meeting is necessary for the Council to continue operations of the City and the discharge of its lawful purposes, duties, and responsibilities. And is being held pursuant to and in compliance with City of Norfolk Ordinance 47967 as authorized by Virginia Code Section 15.2 dash 1413 and will be conducted telephonically and electronically. Notice of this meeting was given to the public on June 5th in the Virginia Palette and an electronic copy of the agenda was posted on the city's website on June 5th. Please stand for a moment of silence and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States, of, America, United States of America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Mrs. Doyle. Here. Mrs. Graves. Mrs. Graves. Here. Thank you. Mrs. Johnson. Here. Mrs. McClellan. Here. Mr. Riddick. Here. Thank you. Mr. Smeagle. Here. Thank you. Mr. Thomas. Here. Dr. Alexander. Here. Mr. Clark, uh, please read the resolution. Uh, Dispense with the reading of the minutes of our previous meeting. Mrs. Doyle. Aye. Mrs. Graves. Aye. Mrs. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Dr. Alexander? Aye. Tonight we have an invitation to bid. Uh, we have, uh, then we'll take up public hearings, then the consent agenda, which we voted on in the block. If any member of the council or the public wishes to discuss an item, it will be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. Following the consent agenda, we'll take up regular agenda items in the order as they appear on the docket. There is no new business tonight. To address the council, you should have registered to speak prior to this meeting. Mr. Clark, before we do IB1, uh, I want to first uh, thank the administration, uh, thank our police department, Team Norfolk, every council member, um, but more importantly, the residents. The residents, uh, corporate citizens, our faith-based community, civic organizations, and all who uh, this past week uh, demonstrated and, and protest in a very peaceful way in the city of Norfolk, in a very nonviolent way. It speaks volumes uh, to the love and care that our residents, our corporate citizens, our faith-based community, our civil organizations they have for our city. And every council member, let me say thank you for uh, just standing uh, for right and standing for, for justice. And uh, to all the residents and, and everyone who, who's demonstrating and continue to, to pour out, uh, we see you in the city of Norfolk, but more importantly, this council, we hear you. And tonight, I wanna to take a resolution out of order, Mr. Clark. And now re uh, read the resolution. And this is a resolution, resolution of the City Council uh, to, uh, of Norfolk to acknowledge not only do we see, but we actually hear. It says, whereas the City of Norfolk is committed to the just administration of public safety and our police department that safeguards the rights, freedoms, and safety of every resident, and whereas the Norfolk Police Department is committed to a model community oriented policing and public safety initiatives that are designed to help build communities using a whole of government approach. And whereas a community oriented police department is essential in ensuring these objectives, the safety of every citizen, their lives and the spirit of democratic order. And whereas as a city, we are grateful for the service, the courage, 
and contributions of law enforcement officers committed to building community and the pursuing safe de-escalation as the ultimate goal when responding to potentially violent incidents. And whereas the members of the Norfolk City Council remain dedicated to public engagement, justice, and pursuing public safety strategies that limit interventions, improve commu community interactions, and de-escalate potentially violent situations, now therefore be it resolved by the Council of the City of Norfolk, Section 1, that the Norfolk City Council hereby directs the city manager to update its general order on use of force to banding high-speed police chases in all cases other than those involving felonies which have resulted in serious injury or death. Section 2, that the manager petitioned the Virginia Department of Criminal Justice Services to end its mandate that requires the Commonwealth's police departments to train its officers in employing carotid choke holds. Section 3, that the manager publish current Norfolk Police Department policy and procedure man manual, all general orders, special orders, and update annual reports on a regular basis. These items shall be made available to the public on the City of Norfolk website and on open data platform. Mr. Clerk. Adopt the resolution, Mrs. Doyle. Aye. Mrs. Graves. Aye. Mrs. Johnson. Aye. Mrs. McClellan. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smeagle. Aye. Mr. Thomas. Aye. Dr. Alexander. Aye. Mr. Clerk, I do what? Okay, the next item is the receipt of bids pursuant to invitation to bid and notice of public hearing scheduled this day pursuant to state law. Public notice having been inserted in the local press by the city clerk to accept bids for a long-term lease for a, five, for a term of five years with the option to renew the lease for five additional one-year periods at the city of Norfolk property located at the intersection of Hampton Boulevard and 50th Street subject to certain terms and conditions. Mr. Clerk, how many bids have been received? We received one, sir. Please read and mark it for identification. Okay, this bid is from ODU, and they want to use the lot for uh, parking for students, faculty, and staff for a term of five years from and including the first day of July 2020 and ending June 30th, 2025. Uh, lease may be renewed annually up to five additional one-year terms and uh, says ODU will share equally with the city any net revenues derived from fees collected for the use of the property above the sum of $18,000 annually. Uh, are there any other uh, bids offered? None. So, all right. If there are no additional bids offered, I declare the bidding closed. Is there any member of the public who wishes to be heard on this matter? No, no one's called me. If there's no member of the public who wishes to be heard on the matter, I declare the public hearing closed. Is there a recommendation from staff regarding the bid received from Old Dominion University? Sir, city staff recommends that the bid by Old Dominion University be reviewed by city staff and a recommendation be brought back to this council at the July 14th, 2020 meeting. Is there a motion to continue this matter to the next meeting of the city council on July 14th, 2020? To I move that we continue IB1. I second that motion. Is there any further discussion? If not, Mr. Clerk, call the roll. Yeah, the motion is to continue until <clears throat> July 14th, 2020. Mrs. Doyle? Aye. Mrs. Graves? Aye. Mrs. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Thank you. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Dr. Alexander. Aye. Mr. Clerk, page one. 
public hearing one scheduled this day pursuant to state law to hear comments to amend and reordain the code of the city of Norfolk, Virginia, 1979 by adding a new chapter 45.8 entitled commercial property assessed clean energy sea paste financing program. So as to establish the commercial property assess clean energy financing program pursuant to 50.2-958.3 of the code of Virginia 1950 as amended. You to Dr. Feiler. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, so this is an ordinance on CPACE, which comes back to you all after some time. In fact, I think uh, the initial conversations on this uh, occurred before I even uh, became city manager. So during the time, uh, what the administration has been doing with uh, the city attorney's office is crafting the language for the ordinance that you see in front of you. What I really wanted to do this evening, and I realize this is a bit unorthodox, but I wanted to get an opportunity to, to discuss um, really the, the ordinance and, and the key part of this ordinance, which is if you remember back when these conversations were occurring, there were really two routes that the administration of the program could go. One route was where the city essentially stood up a department or a dedicated staff to create a program guide for the program, coordinate billing and collection process, essentially become the servicer of the CPACE loan. Uh, the other option that emerged then was to uh, go after a third party contract uh, or contract with a third party program administrator. Uh, we had already been down the route of thinking that the program administration uh, option was the better option. I think given current budget constraints, uh, we would all agree that uh, it's, it's really infeasible to think about standing up a program internally at this point. Therefore, this ordinance proposes that the city contract with a program administrator uh, that's found in section 45.8-40. This section also allows for the city to contract with an established CPACE administrator, uh, which might be chosen by the Commonwealth should the Commonwealth decide to pick such a public administrator at a later date. Uh, and that's in there primarily because the, the Commonwealth has hinted at the possibility that they would pick a statewide program administrator uh, that then localities would be allowed to opt into using that administrator. Uh, one of the points that I really want to make clear to everyone is that uh, while we're contracting with a program administrator here, there are no net new costs to the city of Norfolk in these financial times. That would be uh, really difficult for us to, to figure out a way to pay for. So the fees for the administration of the program actually come from borrower uh, closing cost fees. Uh, we will have to come back to this body uh, at a later date to determine the fee amount after we contract with a program administrator and we get some estimate of those administrative costs. Um, and so we would come back with another uh, resolution to council in terms of setting fees uh, for this program. But I did want to make it very, very clear that the ordinance that is in front of you this evening is to go the third party administration route and not handle uh, billing, collections, servicing, um, uh, the program guide, and indeed the whole application process for this uh, internally. We will contract with a program administrator for that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Ms. McClellan. Uh, uh, Dr. Fowler, thank you for that additional information, but since people haven't heard about what CPACE is for a long time, maybe it would be helpful to have just a quick overview as to why the city would want to adopt this sure. uh, as a financing tool for our, our, our property owners to um, uh, enlist or create uh, resilience uh, infrastructure, uh, energy efficiency infrastructure, and renewable energy infrastructure. Uh, and this is a, a really great financing tool that we can allow a new development and redevelopment in the city of Norfolk. And it's a tool in our toolbox that, to your point, Chip, will cost the city nothing. So we've been working on this. Uh, Councilwoman Johnson and I have been talking about this for so many years, and we're really excited to get here. So I, I, I appreciate the minutia of the administrator issue, but at the top level, this is just going to allow us, hopefully, to attract um, development that will will fit with our climate action plan and our resilience quotient for the city of Norfolk. So just want to make sure that was in included. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, can I ask a question? Yes. Ms. Doyle. When is the effective date of the administration of this program? Uh, I mean, we have a, a 
a period of time where we have to um, engage in an RFP process in order for us to contract with the uh, program administrator. So uh, should this be passed by uh, council this evening, we would immediately begin the RFP process for the program administrator. We then need to uh, sit with the program administrator, identify what the program fees would be. Then we would have to come back to council to have an additional resolution laying out how we would um, uh, charge for the administration of the program. So uh, we have a bit of time yet uh, before we would get to actually uh, launch the program. Uh, I guess use the phrase launch loosely there. Uh, but once this is approved this evening, we would proceed forward in a pretty expeditious fashion to, to be able to um, uh, move forward with anybody that would want to take advantage of this program. Thank you. Uh, uh, Chip, yes. um, that's a great question, uh, Councilwoman Doyle. Are we going to ride on somebody else's RFP so we could expedite the process? So we do or are we have. Gonna issue our RFP? Yes, ma'am. So we we do have. Now that we have decided to go the program administration route and we are having uh, an RFP process, there are other localities in Virginia that do it this manner, and so we do have RFPs. Uh, that we can look at and go off of. Um, in addition, um, you know, there has been the speculation that the state may do it uh, at the state level in terms of a program administrator. Uh, and so they also have been thinking about what an RFP for that might look like. So I, I believe in both ways, whether it's other localities or the Commonwealth themselves, we have some models to work off of to uh, move forward with an RFP pretty quickly. So just to be clear, it's not, the state's not looking at it. It was legislation that was passed to create a, uh, a state administrator uh, in this past General Assembly. So they will, after July 1st, be putting the RFP out for a state administrator statewide. That, that is that is our understanding. Okay. Correct. Correct. Okay. Thank you. I think we uh, would exciting. like to move. I think what we would like to do is move a little quicker than that, but um, always have as, as that one clause in, in 45.8-40 allows us to circle back and, and, and uh, basically ride along with the Commonwealth um, in, in their process. Yep. Others? Okay, Mr. Clay. I have an ordinance to amend and reordain the code of the city of Norfolk, Virginia, 1979 by adding a new chapter 45.8 entitled Commercial Property Assessed Clean Energy CPACE Financing <coughs> Program so as to establish the Commercial Property Assessed Clean Energy Financing Program pursuant to 15.2-958.3 of the Code of Virginia, 1950 as amended. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance twice and adopt with the effective date. Mrs. Doyle? Aye. Mrs. Graves? Aye. Mrs. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. And I, I, just real quick, the screen that we're seeing is just a generic screen that says June 9th, 2020, Norfolk City Council. Was there supposed to be a presentation was, to go right. along no. with the. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm being told no, Tommy. Okay, there's a screen share yes. that is just a generic screen share. Just wanted to let you guys know that. Okay, but I. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Dr. Alexander? Aye. PH2. Public hearing two scheduled this day pursuant to state law to hear comments authorizing the conveyance to Harvey Nash of that certain parcel of property located at 862 and 864 A Avenue in accordance with the terms and condition of the purchase and sale agreement and authorizing the release of the city's right of reverter upon certain conditions. I have an ordinance authorizing the conveyance to Harvey Nash of those certain parcels of property located at 862 and 864 A Avenue in accordance with the terms and conditions of the purchase and sale agreement and authorizing the release of the city's right of reverter upon satisfaction of a certain condition. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance twice and adopt with the effective date. Mrs. Doyle? Aye. Mrs. Graves? Aye. Mrs. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Dr. Alexander? Aye. PH3? Public hearing three scheduled this day pursuant to state law to hear comments authorizing the conveyance to Harvey Nash of that certain parcel of property located at 731 Washington Avenue in accordance with the terms and condition of the purchase and sale agreement and authorizing the release of the city's right of revert upon certain conditions. 
I have an ordinance authorizing the conveyance to Harvey Nash of that certain parcel of property located at 731 Washington Avenue in accordance with the terms and conditions of the purchase and sale agreement and authorizing the release of the city's right of revert upon the satisfaction of a certain condition. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance twice and adopt with the effective date. Mrs. Doyle? Aye. Mrs. Graves? Aye. Mrs. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Dr. Alexander? Aye. Uh, Mr. Clerk, uh, the consent agenda, C1, we'll take out C9, and we'll pass consent agenda excluding C9. Correct. Adopt the consent agenda with the exception of C9. Mrs. Doyle? Aye. Mrs. Graves? Aye. Mrs. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. McClellan? Aye. Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Dr. Alexander? Aye. Mr. Clerk, the motion is to continue uh, C9 to June 23rd? That is correct, sir. Roll. Mrs. Doyle? Aye. Mrs. Graves? Aye. Mrs. Johnson? Aye. Ms. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Dr. Alexander? Aye. Mr. Clerk? R1? Sure. R1 is an ordinance approving the exercise by the Norfolk Airport Authority of powers conferred by Chapter 34, Acts of Assembly of Virginia of 1918 as amended and Section 144 of the Norfolk Charter as amended in conjunction with the issuance of not to exceed $30 million of the airport's revenue obligations to finance the design, acquisition, construction, and equipping of certain capital improvements at Norfolk International Airport and to pay costs associated with issuance of such obligations. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance twice and adopt with the effective date. Mrs. Doyle? Aye. Mrs. Graves? Aye. Mrs. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Uh, may I ask a question? Yes, Mr. Riddick. Yes. Where are we on that uh, new runway? Did they turn us down or are we trying to get it? Yes. Or yeah. I, I think the best way to say it is that we're still working on it. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I'll go Thank you. Mr. Smeagol? It's my understanding that the military wrote letters opposing the second runway, but they're continuing to work on um, working with the military on that. That's correct. Yes. How do you vote, sir? Mrs. Aye. Thank you. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Dr. Alexander? Aye. R2? R2 is an ordinance approving an amendment to a lease agreement between the City of Norfolk and Vessel Craft Coffee LLC for the space located within the Norfolk City Hall. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance twice and adopt with the effective date. Mrs. Doyle? Aye. Mrs. Graves? I didn't realize that we had to approve this, but what I think going forward is that if we have any vendors who are leasing space in City Hall, it probably would be a good idea to put this um, particular language that we have here or something similar in their lease. And so it would protect them and it would be an act of good faith on our part that if we ever had to close down the city for any reason, you know, like maybe a second round of COVID-19 or whatever the case may be, that from the date of shutdown through the date of reopening or whatever, um, that their rent is automatically um, canceled or whatever terminology it is you want to use. But I think that if we could consider doing that for any other um, tenant in the city, I think that would be helpful. I vote aye. Thank you. Mrs. Mrs. Johnson? Mrs. Johnson? Mrs. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Was, was there a reason why they only requested April? 
Uh, yeah, Councilman, we um, effectively we shut City Hall down near the end of March, so they had already made their, their March rent payment. And they request it abated until we reopen. Until we go, right. Okay, I'm sorry, I missed the part that said until they were, that I, I was only looking at the April 2020, I. Oh, I see. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Dr. Alexander? Aye. Thank you. R3? R3 is an ordinance amending the FY 2020 Annual Appropriations Ordinance Number 47636. So is to accept, appropriate, and authorize the expenditure of grant funds up to the sum of $8,928,000 from the Commonwealth of Virginia Children's Services Act funds pool and previously appropriated local matching funds in the amount of $3,172,000 for the Children's Services Act program from the city through its Department of Human Services and $300,000 from the school board of the city of Norfolk. Dispense with the charter requirement for e reading the ordinance twice and adopt with the effective date. Mrs. Doyle? Aye. Mrs. Graves? Aye. Mrs. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Dr. Alexander? Aye. R4. R4 is a resolution requesting that the Circuit Court of the City of Norfolk order a referendum on the question of whether casino gaming shall be permitted in the City of Norfolk to be included in the regular general election of November 3, 2020. Adopt the resolution. Mr. Mrs. Mayor, could I ask a quick question? Yes, Mr. Smeagol. Uh, Mr. Pisco, um, is there a actual the actual language that's going to be used on the referendum uh, is it the end of this resolution that's the actual statement um, th there, there um, is language in the um, state code um, and uh, I, I don't believe that we put it in this uh, resolution um, but the language is in the state code uh, that is legislated that, that language will be given to the court and the registrar. Is it a, do you remember if it's a, I, I, I'm trying to remember, it's been so long since we talked about it, but is it a generic statement about approving gaming uh, casinos not specific to uh, Pamunkey Indians or any type of language like that? Y yes, I believe you're correct. It, it's approval of the concept. Yeah, it, Tommy, from my recollection, the language uh, speaks very generally, shall gaming uh, be permitted in, in their five localities, of course, uh, that the General Assembly uh, 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 cited in the legislation. Um, and so the, la the language will be very general, asking shall gaming be permitted in the city of Norfolk. And okay. All right, thank you. Mrs. Doyle? Just to, uh, Mr. Mayor, just to clarify, this still has to go through the lottery board? That for is, that, yes. That, that is correct. So actually, yeah, Councilwoman, that's that's a, a good point. So part of the referendum is also the approval by by the lottery, you know, subject to the approval by the lottery board. So I think, uh, so I have, it, I have it right here. So it's, shall casino gaming be permitted at a casino gaming establishment in your location as may be approved by the Virginia Lottery Board. Okay, thank you. Okay. Adopt the resolution, Mrs. Doyle. Aye. Mrs. Graves. Aye. Mrs. Johnson. Mrs. Johnson. Aye. Thank you. Mrs. McClellan. Aye. Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smeagol. Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Dr. Alexander? Aye. R5? R5 is an ordinance granting conditional use permits to authorize the operation of a convenience store with the sale of alcoholic beverages for off-premises consumption and the sale of smoking or vaping products named Marketplace Soups and Salads on property located at 100 Brook Avenue. Mr. Clerk? Dispense with the chair. Uh, question, Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Riddick. Yeah. Um, the vape is, is this an item that, you know, the health uh, of saying that it's bad vaping? Mr. Reed, is off-premises. 
No, th this one is okay. So oh, smoking, okay, thanks. yeah. So smoking and vaping are together. So this one is going to be selling smoking products off premise for off premise consumption, but not vaping. So the vaping is going to be on premise. No, they're not doing vaping. So they're, okay, they're not, they're not selling or doing vaping. Okay, Mr. Riddick, the, uh, it's smoking products off premise. Yeah. Okay. Dispense with the charter so, requirement. Excuse me, Mr. Riddick. Further? Yes, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance twice and adopt with the effective date. Mrs. Doyle? Aye. Mrs. Graves? Aye. Mrs. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Alan, I abstain from this one. Thank you. Dr. Alexander? Aye. Um, Mr. Clerk, R6, is there a motion? Yeah, the motion is to continue this, sir, to June the 23rd. Okay. Mrs. Doyle? Aye to the motion to continue till the 23rd. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Correct. Mrs. Graves? Didn't we already continue this once before? That's correct. So why are we continuing it again? Um, I know there's a motion, but what's the reasoning behind it? That, uh, I, I, I'm not, I wasn't aware of the motion, but I, I am aware that what they're proposing to uh, do is uh, use um, uh, uh, gray machines. Uh -huh. And um, I, I know that the authority to operate gray machines outside of an ABC establishment is very uncertain and does not permit the uh, Queen of Virginia machines. Uh, which they, uh, I think, intend to use. So I think there are several questions still about it, but I, I'm not the one that uh, was aware of the motion to continue, but I, I was aware that there are issues with gray machines, notwithstanding last session's legislation. And you said gray ma machines or cleaner green machines? What did, what, what did you say there? Oh, oh queen, uh, that, that the primary distributor is a company in Pennsylvania that trains under the name Queen, uh -huh. and, the, and the Queen machines uh, provide cash payouts, that, that they are what we typically refer to as gray machines, and that this operator includes Queen machines, which is not permitted in the family entertainment centers, but is mm -hmm. permitted in ABC establishments just for one year. And, and so um, I, I know there are questions and issues, but I, I don't know I assume that's the reason that we've asked for it to be considered continued because of these questions. Just some clarity. And in um, it, and Angela, I can help a little bit too with this. Uh, it, the purpose of the law for, that was passed by the General Assembly to allow these to operate was in existing uh, establishments that had ABC licenses. This establishment does not have an existing ABC license. And so, uh, they, when the last the last time the gaming committee met on this, there was so much uh, misinformation uh, and lack of information about the intentions of the general assembly uh, with these establishments that we have come up with a lot of new information and now have a better understanding. In fact, uh, I will be speaking with uh, Councilwoman Johnson, but we will probably have to move our date up of our gaming committee, which I think was originally supposed to meet after this date in order for us to be able to consider uh, with this new information uh, that's there. And this establishment has operated previously as a vape establishment that had four machines in it, and they're requesting to go up to 60 machines. And I believe they have applied for an ABC license now, uh, but all of this has to be done by June 30th. There is a $1,200 tax per machine per month that's been established for one year, and the locality gets $144 per machine per month off of any gray machine uh, in, in Norfolk. So this includes the ones that are existing in 7-Elevens. And so the gaming committee will need to discuss whether or not uh, these types of establishments were what the General Assembly's intentions were and uh, bringing that recommendation back to council 
uh, which I don't believe it was originally the intentions of the General Assembly for these to pop up. So just to give you an example, this would be a mini Rosie's. So if you can imagine a Rosie's establishment uh, in, in, uh, with 60s of, 60 of these kind of gambling machines in one location with just alcohol, uh, no food, uh, I, I think it's something that we need to have some continued conversations. And I believe there's a few more of these that may pop up before the last, uh, before the end of the month. And so the gaming committee would like to discuss this further. So how can they have alcohol and no food? I thought you had to have food if you had alcohol. I, I believe that's correct. And, and, and this new legislation uh, clearly permits gray machines uh, for a year if you have an ABC license. And so I understand some entities are just getting the license in order to have the gray machines and may or may not qualify to serve the alcohol, but believe that they qualify for gray machines because they've got the license. So as Mr. Smeagol says, this legislation becomes effective on July the 1st, and there appear to be some creative thoughts about how to um, uh, get in the window and have gray machines for one year and see what the General Assembly does next year. Okay. I vote aye on the continuance. <laughs> thank you. Mrs. Johnson? Um, thank you, Councilman um, Smeagol, for trying to um, sum up what the gaming, committee, um, gaming Committee's work has been, and there still is a lot of work that we have to do, um, even though um, the legislation has been passed. There are still great, great areas. Aye. Mrs. McClellan? The gray machine aye. is gray areas? <laughs> legislation. Yes, I vote aye. Thank you. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Thank you. Mr. Smeagol? Hey, hey, just real quick, I forgot to mention, we originally thought that the tax on this that, that was coming back to the locality was $1,200 per machine every month. And, you know, when the gaming committee discussed this, we thought, wow, I mean, think about that's a half a million dollars coming in at one location in that year, particularly with the budget deficit. Uh, but uh, we unfortunately found out that 84% of that um, is going actually to uh, COVID relief and only 14% uh, comes back to the locality and then 2% to the ABC board for operational purposes. So uh, there were some, like An uh, Andrew said, gray areas with the gray machine legislation, and uh, we've been working through that. Um, so we appreciate everybody's patience. Uh, aye. Thank you. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Dr. Alexander? Aye. Mr. Clark, do you have others? Yes. Um, R7 is a resolution appointing Kim Y. Sutter to the Norfolk City Planning Commission for a certain term. Adopt the resolution, Mrs. Doyle. Aye. Mrs. Graves. Aye. Mrs. Johnson. Aye. Mrs. McClellan. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Riddick. Aye. Mr. Smeagol. Aye. Mr. Thomas. Aye. Dr. Alexander. Aye. And I have one other sir. Mr. Parker, right on. Um, can I add something, please, to that? I think it's great because we just appointed Kim, and today is her birthday. Oh. So it's a great yeah. birthday present. We gave her a lot of work to do, but she's up to the task for it. Thank you. Um, R8 is an ordinance to schedule two public hearings, one on June 24th, 2020 at 6 p.m., and one on June 25th, 2020 at 6 p.m. in the council chamber to hear comments related to the adoption of the proposed Second Amendment Initiative Ordinance. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance Mr. twice. Mr. Pishka, can I ask another question? I apologize. Yes, Mr. Smeagol. This was, I know this was added on last minute. I asked this question the last time we did this public hearing, um, but will are we permitting those speakers who spoke um, at the first public hearing to speak on the same issue on the second day of the public hearing? Oh, um, we, we had not uh, discussed it, but when we did it the last time, we, we concluded that it was wiser to allow uh, speakers um, to speak at each of the public hearings, um, but we have not discussed it for these. Okay. 
Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance twice and adopt with the effective date, Mrs. Doyle. Alan, can you repeat the dates again? It was not quite clear when so, you stated them. June 24th and June 25th, both beginning at 6 p.m. I vote aye. Thank you. Mrs. Graves? Aye. Mrs. Johnson? So, Mr. Bull, for June 24th and 25th, is this only to address the Second Amendment, or is this all, does this also include regular council business? No, this is just only uh, for this public hearing for this uh, initiative ordinance. Thank you. Aye. Thank you. Mrs. McClellan? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Dr. Alexander? Aye. That's all I have, sir. Thank you. Please turn.